see the opening is not too big. These things are big. They're approximately 30 inches wide and at least three feet long. What in the hell is this? This is crazy. You must be Scott. Hey guys. Chad? Chad Snyder. How are nice you to doing? meet you, sir. Ryan? Nice Ryan? to meet you, Scott. I'm anxious to hear more about this uh, interesting chamber, this strange site you found. We have no idea what this underground chamber could be. We kind of figured you were probably the man to talk to. We've heard that you spend your life cruising around looking for intriguing sites, and uh, I think that's what we've come across. I tell you what, as I look around here, what a beautiful area, but uh, it's awful remote. How did you guys find this site? We were small game hunting, and uh, we ended up uh, coming across the entrance to, to this chamber. Um, it was kind of half hidden, but but it was exposed enough that you could see it was, it was definitely a void. Wow. That must have been pretty surprising, huh? Yes. It was. Not as surprising as climbing back in there. Well, I saw some of the pictures that you sent, and it looks really intriguing. Yeah, we actually took some more pictures for you. Oh, yeah. Wanted to see what you thought of these. Is this as you're coming in the entrance this here? This is coming in the passageway on the way in, which is about 24 inches wide. And okay. this is the first thing you come into before you get into the chamber. This is where the spring comes out of the hillside, Scott. OK. And it snakes around and falls into that basin. So it sort of curves a little here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is the water flowing constantly? Yes. It is. OK. So it is a natural spring. We'd love to take you there, but there's a problem with the landowner over there. They allow public hunting, but they didn't want to give permission to you. Me specifically? Yes. Really? Well, this is more bullshit. You know, I've been through this crap before, and you go in. And once I get that information, I'll tell you who built this thing, when they built it, and why. All right. Uh, ready to roll, huh? Yes, sir. Well, this might not be the type of hunting that you expected, but right. this is really going to be important stuff you're going to do here. I need for you to go in and get some really precise dimensions. OK. This is really important. This is a Brunton compass. It's a very special kind of compass used by geologists. The most critical measurement right now for me is going to be the orientation in other words, the long axis of the entrance. See that little bubble right there? Mm -hmm. Okay, you want to get that in the middle. Okay. Right down that number. Okay. Okay, so that's the number I need. That's your orientation. That's an important number. That's a very important okay. number. The other thing I need is I want the angle of the hill where the chamber is. If my hunch is right and the measurements yeah. that Chad is getting line up, I'll be able to see if this water basin feature was used for some sort of ritual on a specific day of the year and if this site is connected to hundreds of other stone sites in the U.S. and even around the world. You know, my thinking is here, this could potentially be a really important pre-Columbian site. That ritual bathing aspect of that basin really intrigues me. The other possibility, to be quite honest with you, is it may be modern, but the only people that could possibly be associated with something like that, in my opinion, and that's some sect of Freemasons probably in the late 1700s. Freemasonry is a fraternal, invite-only society that many people believe evolved from the Knights Templar after the church abolished the order. The two groups share the same symbols, like the Cross of Lorraine and the Hooked X. They also share ideologies like dualism, a belief that unions like male and female and heaven and earth have spiritual importance. Hey, Chad. Hey, guys. All right. How are you? How'd it go? It went great. So do you have the uh, I notebook? Got you, I got your measurements <laughs> for you, bud. All right. Here you go. This is the magic number right here, 300 degrees. Excellent. 300 degrees. That's perfect. That's absolutely perfect. You know why? Have you guys ever heard of archaeoastronomy? No. no. OK, well, archaeoastronomy is something that ancient cultures have been doing for thousands of years. Basically, what they would do is align the structures that they built to align in various ways to capture either the light of the sun the moon, or the planet Venus. It was very sacred to these ancient cultures. And this use of archaeoastronomy has gone all the way through time into modern Freemasonry. I didn't want to say it before because I, I, was, I wanted to wait and see the numbers. But this 300 degrees is going to be about 30 degrees north of west when the sun sets on the summer solstice. And if I'm right, 
that long entrance into the chamber uh -huh. will allow the setting sun on the solstice, the summer solstice, to come all the way through into that chamber. We have to find out if that light does come through that chamber because it's critical. So what we need to do is I have to replicate and, and have somebody build a chamber using your dimensions. And these numbers look really good. I think you got everything, didn't you? I got everything you asked yeah? for. We are in great shape. And I've got a plan to test my theory. Hey, Carrie, this is Scott Walter. I just found out about a mysterious underground stone chamber in Pennsylvania, and uh, I'm wondering if you could help me out by building a model. Yeah, I can do that. I wasn't able to go in there and look at it myself, but I do have pictures, I've got some video, and I have dimensions that were sketched out. I also think that there might be a solar illumination going on inside there, and that's why your model will really come in handy. If we can prove that, we've really got something, so, um, you up to the task? Yep, definitely. There's over 800 mysterious stone sites in the northeast part of the country. Many people believe that these things might be connected, and I'm investigating whether they could be connected, who built them, and of course, why. And a lot of people are thinking that the Irish could be involved in these, and the Irish do make sense in places like Gunjiwan. This doesn't seem to be Irish to me. Because of the involvement of the water, I think maybe the Knights Templar would build something like this. They were into ritual bathing. Or it could be somebody more modern, somebody like a secret society, maybe a Freemason group that was into this ritual bathing type of thing. You know, the water's the wild card with a chamber like this. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of the water, check this out. Look at that. The water's coming down, and it's flowing into the basin. That's going to fill up, and it's going to overflow. Chad said it just flows into the ground mm -hmm. and then comes out uh, in a ravine farther okay. down the hill. I tell you what, I'm impressed. Well, Carrie, this looks great. But there's one more piece. We need to see if the light comes through into the chamber and goes back there, because I think it just might. What we are going to do is position the light so it exactly matches where the sun would be in the sky outside the chamber on the summer solstice. Then we're going to move the light to replicate the sun's movement across the sky to see if it illuminates the spring. The sun's position is well documented, thanks to Chad's precise measurements. I know it lines up with the chamber. So, yeah, there, okay, stop right there. There's a beam of light right here. Mm -hmm. So keep going, keep going, and set it into place so it's moving along the back wall here. Based on Chad's measurements, like the 300 degree orientation he found, it's exactly what I expected. It goes all the way to the back. And it goes back, that's where the water comes out of the crack in the ground, the spring. Right. The light goes all the way back there. That's incredible. In this case, we have the sunbeam, an ancient allegorical symbol of the fertilization by the male. It pierces Mother Earth, the crevice in the earth where the spring flows from. Together, this union of the sun and earth produces something beautiful and sacred to the ancient architects of this chamber. Knowing the type of masonry used to build it and figuring in the ritual bathing components, I have to think the Freemasons were involved in this chamber, which probably dates back to colonial times. Even though we weren't inside the Pennsylvania chamber on the summer solstice, it doesn't matter. With your model here in this demonstration, we've proven what happens on that day. <laughs>